guys, um, great to be with you today on Thursday. Today is December 22nd, and it's our final show of the year. And so before we get started today, I want to thank all of our great sponsors. Seven Mile Casino, I start with you every day. I will continue to. Seven Mile Casino just committed to us for 2023. That's a big deal in our business, you know, especially when it's not a sales guy working with a sales manager, working with the general, dude, it's me and them, you know? So seven mile casino, appreciate you. And I'm going to keep sending all of our great friends your way. If you play blackjack or poker, if you love Sammy's wood fire pizza, it's right there in the casino, Sammy's restaurant and bar. If you like a smoke free environment, I know I prefer that. And if you like the great location of only being seven minutes South, seven mile casino is the place for you. If you have any problems with gambling, you call 1-800 gambler, but Thank you, Seven Mile, for a great 22 and looking forward to a really great 2023. Same goes for Tory Holistics. Um, Tory Holistics in Sorrento Valley, California Holistics in Chula Vista. And I will stop by next week and visit with our friends at Mammoth Holistics when I'm up there uh, during the holidays. And our promo code is HOLIDAYS, H-O-L-I-D-A-Z-E. Somebody sent me a message this morning on, on a uh, Facebook instant message saying, um, dude, what's the promo code? Great friends? I'm like, no, it's HOLIDAYS. You save 20% when you use our promo code. Great partners for us this past year, 2022. We seem to sell an awful lot of weed and I'm looking forward to a really, really good 2023 with Tory Holistics. Okay, let me keep going here. Um, Athletic Greens. I've told you guys a story here before. Um, this is a this is a kind of a different deal for us. We I love this product. And if I didn't love the product, I would never be doing what I'm doing because this is called direct response, meaning we get paid as we sell. And listen, you don't care about that. What do you get? What do you care if we get paid or not? The reason I'm promoting this product hard is because I love this product and it is a game changing product. All your vitamins, all your nutrients are all kind of in this pack. I don't take any vitamins anymore. By the way, I'm not here to tell you, hey, live like I live because I'm the pillar of health, but everybody needs something you know, uh, especially as we're getting a little bit older and um, we're living stressful lives. You take this one packet of athletic greens, which by the way, you get five packets of that. That's the travel packet. You get the one year supply of the vitamin D one little drop. And every day I take this product. And when you don't take it, and by the way, like on a day like today, after the day I had yesterday, you have no idea how much I need this recovery, um, probiotics to kind of keep the system moving and just clarity. Dude, really, really, that's for me the biggest thing. And it tastes good. I know it looks like shit because it's green, right? But it tastes good. Mm. Go to our website, athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. All the, all the things are built in, meaning the five free packets for travel, the vitamin D supply for a year. It's all right there. If I didn't love this product, if I didn't swear by this product, if I wasn't giving this product as gifts for the holidays, I'll never freaking do this. Pay your ass. You know, you need to pay to get on this show, but I'm going to prove to them because it pisses me off. I'm going to prove to them we sell. So athletic greens. Why do I take everything so personal? I'm such a fucking dick at times. You know what I'm saying, Alice? Take everything so personal. I got to prove to them we sell. Hey, uh, keep it on. Ride one up e-bikes. Ride one up .co slash great friends. Ride one up e-bikes. Um, look, last show of the year. Alex, you, you happy with your, your ride one up e-bike? I would say so. Yeah. All your friends impressed when they came over and rode it this past weekend? Uh, very much so. Okay. Um, are you suggesting than, that people? More than my car. More than my house. <laughs> yeah. The reaction to the bike was impressive. Right. So the house, they're like, okay, good for you. You bought a condo. Right. Hey, new car. Great. You got a great, great deal because you're with the radio show. But this bike, they're all impressed, huh? Sir. Here's our landing page, rideoneup.co slash great friends. Lots of savings on all the models, but you'll get an additional $50 savings right now when you use our promo code great friends. There's another one of these deals where it's like, we got to sell in order for them to want to stick around. So um, if you're going to buy an e bike, this is the company to buy with, rideoneup.co slash great friends. Hey, nobody seems to be too impressed with Alex's new car, Penske San Diego, Penske San Diego.com. <laughs> this one's super easy, dude. Just go to their website because it will make things move a lot faster for you because they've got every brand. Look, they've got all these different stores, 12 stores, nine brands, Acura, Audi, BMW, Honda, Lexus, Mini, Mazda, Mercedes, and Toyota, but they've got all these used cars. Alex bought a certified pre-owned Acura from Acura Vescondido. It's a Penske dealership. So PenskeSanDiego.com. Last thing to mention to you, iThrive, iThrive MD. Alex mentioned to us yesterday, down 23 pounds now, mm -hmm. 23 pounds. 
23 pounds. You can lose weight during the holiday season. One little tiny injection. You save $200 for the first month, $200 for the second month. And as we saw Dr. Fry last week, down 30 pounds. Alex is down 23 pounds. His photographer from his wedding down 60 pounds. Fully guaranteed, FDA approved. You can learn all about it. Go to kaplanandcrew.com and click on the iThrive logo and you're all set up. All right. Um, it's our last show of the year. Let's have a damn good time. Let's do it. Hey, great friends. What's happening? This is Kaplan and crew just hitting the airwaves of 1090, just hitting the stream of YouTube. Tonight we'll be on TV, all the audio podcast platforms. And today is our final broadcast day of 2022. So with Grande and the Brown Man, we welcome you into the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Fellas, we talked about this yesterday, limping towards the finish line. Alex said senioritis is a real thing. Well, today we get to our final broadcast of the year. Grande, thoughts, feelings, feedback. Ready head is where? Ready, ready. My head is everywhere. Um, you know, since we talk about everything on the show, we are all for seven shows. It is my responsibility to produce seven shows, regardless if we're on or off the air. In other I, words, yeah. in other words, we we still have to provide content every day for mm -hmm. radio. So Monday through Friday of next week, even though people take time off and they're, they're they travel differently, right. the radio station still has to run, and it still has to be programmed. And we could say to Bill Hagen, "Hey, you know what, man? Why don't you just go ahead and play ESPN radio?" But I would rather us. And I'm sure you guys would as well. I'd rather us keep our piece of real estate in the middle of the day so that anybody that is driving around, even though we're not on the air live, we're giving you content from the best material of the year. Yeah. So you've been producing Monday through Friday of next week. Well, then tomorrow. Monday. Oh, tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow. Then Monday through Friday is six. Yeah. And then the and following then Monday. Monday, which is what, January 2nd? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so that's kind of the schedule. We're back on Tuesday, January 3rd. So right? that is um let's see let's do the math real quick that's four segments twice so that's eight segments then you got six segments four to five times that's 30 so i had to produce somehow about 40 segments of evergreen best of material mm -hmm. and because i have senioritis i waited until yesterday to do all this <laughs> um seems fair so that's one that's 40 segments 21 minutes each of mm -hmm. listening to you, to me, and to Browner. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, we have a television show. Mm -hmm. They also want stuff. So I have gone and now produced 14 Evergreen Best of Video segments on top of the 40 radio segments. So mm -hmm. I'm tired of my voice. I'm tired of your voice. And I'm tired of Browner's voice. I cannot wait to be done <laughs> with this show. I love you guys, um, how but I'm very over you guys. How come you don't say to Browner, yo, man, I need a hand here. Can you take take on a couple of these because things? Because I already, in the new year, maybe I will tell Browner to take some notes. But I write notes every day, segment mm -hmm. by segment, to know what we're talking about. And then I'll put, luckily, I this I, I got into the habit of it. Uh, in parentheses and bold, I'll put best of. Mm -hmm. So I just had to go through all my notes, find that segment on my, this literally right here everything is right here but on an external drive <laughs> this oh is it God. right here this is a lifesaver right. browner doesn't have this so yeah. gotta get him one yeah um well i think the thing is and i'll, I'll tell you guys both this um i i've been really thinking about this here in the last maybe two weeks or so oh wait look what browner's got look what browner's got oh browner has to do me. lawhead browner best of and in addition to that here's the, here's a real problem with that because he mm -hmm. takes notes i would probably take notes on something different than what he would take notes on and since that the what goes out there requires the person cutting it up, they need to see what a person thought should go on onto the internet. What part should you write down that sticks out that and you the should part, use for a summary? The part that really confuses is, confuses it all, and I cannot guarantee that it's not gonna happen next week, is what old sponsors 
were talked about in those best ofs. Correct. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's so right. uh, that's I can right. only go certain far back. You know, yeah. I'm not going yeah. back three years. I would love yeah. to. Why don't we? Why don't we? Um, why don't we going into the new year? Why don't we have like a Google Drive where you put these notes on a Google Drive, and then this way we can all see them, add to them, whatever. But then this way we kind of all. Here's the reason I'm saying this. You okay? just don't want to. What, what, see, what you're about to do is you're about to put yeah. too many cooks in the kitchen. Okay. This is the, the process is better. Go ahead. This no, no, I'm saying yes. I agree with you. This is so, only a problem at the end. I've of never the seen year. anybody do that before. What is that? That means yeah, yeah, what yes. is that it's hand gesture yes. you just made? What was that? Something? I was I was my mouth was busy, so I was I was saying yes. Yeah, he's putting he put a can yeah. up to his mouth to drink something, <laughs> yeah. but he, he right he looked like he was spraying a yeah, can of like you know before. aerosol. My hand was yeah. doing the head gesture. Yes, my finger was. Anyways, that was so, yeah. yes. I never, never seen, seen that. Before. I've never seen no, that. No, dude, never before. My life, it's a Mexican thing. Could be. I just. I, I that you, when you get to too many cooks in the kitchen, then it gets really confusing. And yeah, but don't you, you think we should try a, and help a podcast this guy? with no sound? I mean, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> right. then all of a sudden, you know, podcast has like, no sound. where's the sound on the podcast? The last segment. My, my bad, y'all. My bad, y'all. My bad. Y'all. No, it's really not a big deal because there, there's never a time that three of us are off for this amount of time until the end of the year. Right. So it's really not that big an issue. And honestly, because I took enough notes, it, I just had to go back and, and get some stuff. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, my, my big goal of the new year, and I'm not talking about like a new year's resolution where I'm like, Hey, on January 1st, I'm starting this. It's just my, my head, like a seed has been planted, you know? And now that it's been planted, it's starting to take on like just little incremental movements of growth. And so I'm saying this to everybody who's listening and everybody who's watching. Okay. Um, I'm hardly some philosopher. All right. But I do know this, that if you want to achieve something, you kind of need to like, you got to set a goal. You got to kind of know where you're going, Correct. you know? And, and so for me in this upcoming new year, Alex, to, to your point, my whole, the word I'm using is growth. Mm. Like, some people use the word scale. They say, I'm trying to get bigger. I'm trying to add more business. Like for me, going into 2023, we, it is time for us. And, and I will tell you guys, like Joe Rigby, longtime listener, guy who brought all the barbecue equipment this past weekend and threw this tailgate party for us, who's been saying to me, let me help you. Let me help you. I have the time. I can do these things for you. Um, to grow, we have to grow beyond three, you know? And then we're going to have to grow beyond four and then beyond five. I need more bodies. I need more people. I need more brains and eyes. And so I'm going to be more willing to accept help like Joe has offered. But in addition, I'm now I'm like looking for a young, teachable, coachable um, person who is who is responsible and respectful, you know, but I'm I'm looking for a person now. That I'm going to bring into the organization to say, this is your Ooh, job. And even though, because I know we need help, we need help. We need help. So I'm, I'm the organization growth. needs help. Yeah. Growth, growth. I'm thinking about growth, thinking about more sales. Cause listen, I'm, I'm concerned like any other business owner, I think out there would be concerned. How is the economy going to affect my business? Now the economy is going to affect our business if we keep doing the same stuff, you know? So now what we got to do is we got to get more creative. We got to, we got to get we got to get more um, uh, forward thinking. We got to we got to break out of what we're doing. We got to be willing to take more risk, et cetera, et cetera. Because the only way to grow, certainly when the economy is probably not, is to come up with interesting new stuff. You know, it's kind of hard being Snoop D O Double G, but I somehow, some way, keep coming up with funky ass stuff like every single day. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yes. I'm not a yeah. philosopher. Snoop is more of a philosopher. You feel me, Browner? I feel you. I respect that. Street philosophy is one of the ways that we keep these things going, man. Yeah. Snoop man, Dogg I is. kick a little something for the G's. And yeah. 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 I mean, but what every day, no, 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 I got to keep coming up with funky ass stuff like every single day. Hey. On man, Sunday, I, I went to a. Yeah. Uh, yeah. white elephant Christmas party on Sunday. What is that? What is, what is that? What is that about? Is, I keep hearing people elephant? say that. What yeah. is a white elephant? I've never racist. seen one. Don't know what For a real. white elephant. At least it's not called a I black don't. elephant. You know? So that's fair. 
If it was a black elephant, Browner would know it. If it yeah, was a black yeah, elephant, right. Browner would be would not know it, but would I'd be, be up in arms. I'd yes. be up in arms. Correct. Right. But yeah. I'm I don't I'm white and I don't even know what a white elephant party is. What is it? So a white elephant party, uh, I think it has many names. Um, but the it's people go with white elephant. Give me another so, name. Give me another name. Yeah, I, I don't have it off the top of my head, Browner, but I've heard it as other things. Oh, let's so, is it called like is it like a secret Santa? Does that sound like something? Um does it sound like a thing? Is there Yankee such a thing? swap? No, I don't know about no Yankee swap. Um, Dirty Santa? Wow. Dirty Santa? No. It's going no. great. I'm glad um, you said ta after San. Yeah, dirty it's called a San. Dirty Santa. What? Uh, oh, a white elephant. Oh, here is, here is what Yankee, a white elephant Yankee swap, Yankee would, swap yeah. is. Uh, okay, go ahead. Everybody that goes to your get-together, so you set yeah. a limit. You're mm -hmm. like, 30 bucks. Your gift has to be around 30 bucks. No lower, no, no more. 30 bucks. So mm -hmm. everybody that goes to your party now shows up with a wrapped anonymous present. Okay. Valued at around $30. Okay? okay. So if there's 20 people there, there should be 20 gifts there under the tree, all unwrapped and unnamed. And so if there's 20 people there, you draw names, numbers, one through 20. That mm -hmm. number corresponds to the order that you will open a gift. Number one, has their choice, obviously, of uh -huh. every single gift to get. You don't know what's okay. in those gifts. You okay. just see some are big, some are small, some whatever. Mm -hmm. You get one. Number mm -hmm. two then goes. Number two has the option of A, opening a new gift of the yep. 19 remaining, or B, mm -hmm. stealing the gift that number one got. Okay, just so you know, I didn't know this was called the White Elephant Party, Okay, but I've been to one of these before. Okay. Okay. And I've seen how the stealing of the gift goes. Right. This is very funny. Right. Okay. Keep going. So, and the way I try to play it is there is a maximum of two thefts per gift. That way, that gift, if someone brings like an iPod because they didn't know it was $30, I know you use iPod. That's a that's an office reference. That was so, really brutal. It, yeah. An office reference. Okay, very good. I don't get the game or the office reference, but it's a very good reference, by the way. Anyways, if okay. somebody brings an, uh, uh, let's see, somebody brings an iPad, does that help? And everybody else there is bringing bottles of wine. Everyone's going to want the iPad, right? But so, and so in order for that gift to not keep getting stolen, you put a max of two. So you just keep going until you're done. You know, I think at first, everyone I've been to, everyone's getting new gifts. Right, every you're like, I want to see what's out there. I want to see what's out there. I want to see what's out there. When you get towards the middle, that's when the the, the thieving starts. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when the whole game really gets turned on its head, and people start stealing. And once one person steals, then people really start going at it. And then mm -hmm. the way this game wraps up is number twenty goes. They either steal or get the last gift, and then number one, who could only open a gift, gets mm -hmm. the final say. Whether mm -hmm. they want to keep what they have or mm -hmm. something else, that is a yeah, word. yeah. That's good. That's good. Been there. Been, didn't know it was called white elephant. Fun, fun, very fun. Right. So, what, what was the point of all of that? Oh, we talking about Snoop. I got. Oh. I got. I got. <laughs> <laughs> right, Browner. Like, like when we got to the end of that story, I was like, "So, so what were we okay, talking about? Man. That you now taught us what a white elephant party is. Yeah. All right, but but what was the reason for us needing to know that? The right. reason of you guys needing to know that is that one of I opened a gift, and it was the Snoop Dogg cookbook. Oh, mm. oh, yeah, from Crook to Cook, Snoop Dogg cookbook, and I wanted it. I needed it. It was it was beautiful. It was like a great hard cover. You open it and it's like legitimately I was like is this like CBD infused weed or something or THC infused weed? No, this is like a straight up. I think he him talked and about this Stewart. by the way. He yeah. talked about this, yeah. And and so Mar ended up with a Snoop Dogg wine and I wanted the Snoop Dogg cookbook and we were going to have a Snoop Dogg date night. And I got thieved at the very end. Oh. Right. Yeah. Rough. Yeah, so you talk wow. about the entrepreneurship of, of 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 wanting to grow. Snoop mm -hmm. is a great example. The philosopher, Bro. the philosopher. Snoop. Damn, the way you brought that all back. I said, look, we got to grow in 2023. We got to get more creative. And then it came to me like every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, like like we, I got to keep coming up with funky ass stuff like every mm -hmm. single day. Yeah, May I? Right. Come on, brother. Kick a little, Kick a little something for the G's. For the G's. And yeah. 
break a little sum as I breeze through two in the morning and a party still jumping because my mom ain't home. I got, I got the freaks in the living, living room, room getting it, getting on, it on and, and they, they ain't, ain't leaving, leaving till, till six, six, six in the morning. Six in the morning. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So what you gonna do? Yeah, I got a pocket full of blank and my homeboy do too. <laughs> yeah. So turn we out the lights and close the doors. But for what? We don't love them. Yeah. So yeah. we're gonna smoke an ounce of this. G's, G's up. up, hose down like you want. One second now, you bounce to this. this. Yeah, what up, Snoop? There you, there you go. Got what up, Snoop? What Shout up, out to Snoop. Snoop. We got the, that was Rocky. It was Rocky, but we got through the verse. I'm going to tell you right now. Gin and Juice, yeah. greatest karaoke song ever in the history of karaoke. Easily. I'm going to tell you something right now. If I get a text message today from anybody or a direct message or any communication form. About that shirt? That No. Oh. about about that interpretation of that song oh, and God. you tell me that that sucks I'm telling you right now i will not accept that today i thought it was great <laughs> hey man you we'll made it, it. You, you, you filled in a lot of blanks there mm. you mm. filled in a lot mm. of blanks there all right so we are in the seven mile casino studios it is our final broadcast of the year here on kaplan and crew on the airwaves of 1090 on the stream of youtube on all the different audio podcast platforms, on Channel 4 San Diego, and uh, and the Cox Your View Network. So as Alex has explained, lots, man. You know, lots of, of content has to be packed now so that there are three-hour radio shows every day next week. There are one-hour TV shows every day next week. And if you really miss us, everybody, you can just go to the YouTube channel and you can catch up on where you've maybe left off. You will definitely see Scott showing you the heat is on in his house because he's wearing the most Christmas shirt I think I've seen mm -hmm. in 10, 15 years. No heat. No heat on in the house. Blanket on the chair. Oh, okay. Blanket on the chair. That. I couldn't see that. Not okay. gonna not gonna hit not gonna hypocrite this mofo. All right. <laughs> if if I'm cold, I put on a blanket. All okay. right. Okay. So it's done. No heat. But now if you want to talk about this shirt here for a second, What's Big Brown. The temperature outside right now. Hold on. This guy's got a what do you think of this shirt? Today? It's getting warmer. It's heating up. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think of this shirt right here? What do terrible. You think of this shirt? Really? You think it's terrible? Is that a polo? Yeah, it's a polo. It's like uh, got a you know. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's getting better. Buttons. It's getting it's getting better because you know, it's, it's a polo. Really? It's getting better. When yeah. did when did when did it become the Fashionable. trend to have ugly Christmas stuff? Because I right. love it. It's a thing now. It's like the 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 more wild and out there your shirt is, the better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you all like saw I'm, my suit I'm, jacket on Saturday. Like that, that oh, was that was a hit. Y'all know my you, Walmart special. Mm -hmm. Can you find a? You got to find some pictures. I, you got to. We got to actually go back and and talk about that a little bit today. What the boat party from Saturday oh, and the pregame tailgate? What'd you say? Alex? I thought you were talking about talk about my jacket. I and like, your I could jacket. Just go put it on. No, seriously, because we gotta we gotta do that. And in fact, I need to record like a radio spot for Captain Fathom and Captain Troy and Next Level Sailing. We got to do that. You know, yes. we got to make sure we do that. We owe them big, big time. time. Right. So cool. listen, let me tell you about what's coming up today. A um, lot of stories to get to here this afternoon in our final broadcast of the year. Um, earlier today, the Padres have officially parted ways with Will Myers. Oh, no. Wanna, yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about that. I will yeah. remember <laughs> you. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little Will Myers. Um, also, speaking of the Padres, as we're in our last broadcast, so I want to make sure I mention the year that they had. But yesterday, JT the Brick comes on the radio with us from Vegas, where he's on the radio. And he's doing this whole story yesterday for us, which I found fascinating. I mean, the Franco Harris 50-year reunion, Raiders, Steelers, Christmas Eve, Immaculate Reception, and the week of all these festivities and the retirement of, of Franco Harris's jersey, my man drops dead uh, two nights ago. And JT the Brick comes on the air yesterday, and he's talking about it from a Raider perspective because he's very involved 20-plus years in the organization. He's he's involved with all the history of the organization. You know, uh, He starts going off on this like Fernando Tatis thing. Unsolicited. That, Right. Dude, it's not like we set him up for it. And then not like we had that in a holster for somebody. Yeah. yeah, we didn't call him and go, hey, listen, can you come on the air with us and like really go off on this tattoo story that you you have and and let's blow it up and turn it into a big social media thing? Dude, I cannot believe. I mean, I was barely on Twitter last night because 
other nonsense that was going on. But bro, some of the stuff I've seen on Twitter, are, are you guys like that upset because some sports radio guy has an opinion about mm. something or, yes. or has a rope? Are you really? People are. Mm. Yeah. Why? Uh, mm. There's like a, I don't know how to describe it. There's like a, like a sense of protection about yes. he Padres and like the fan base. Mm. Like if, if you don't go, if, if it doesn't go in line with, with their thoughts, they, you know, it's, it's clout chasing. It's this and that. But if, yeah. if they agree with you, they love, they love you. And they probably trust me as a person yeah. who's been on the other side of that, the, the side that bricks on, I've been on that side. It can get pretty nasty. And then when you defend yourself, you're the bad guy. Mm -hmm. So it's just an opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like what is everybody getting so upset about? You know? Yeah. So anyway, listen, I, I want to talk about Will Myers. I want to talk about what happened on the show yesterday and, and how it turned, how it went viral. We'll get to that. Uh, lots of NFL stuff. Cause there's an NFL football game coming up this evening. Um, Pro bowl rosters. I, I actually want to talk about that. Just touch on it a little bit. So there's plenty I want to get to. And along the way, I'm going to weave in some other stuff today. Um, that's well, anyway, real life holiday, last show of the year, kind of off the top of the head kind of thing. We're in the seven mile casino studio, seven mile casino.com. Will Myers gone from the Padres. We'll get there next. Great friends. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. If you're celebrating Merry Christmas coming up this week. And whatever holiday it is that you uh, you celebrate, man, I hope you're having a great holiday season. We're about to start ours. Kaplan and crew just getting back onto the airwaves of 1090 on the stream of YouTube, TV tonight on Channel 4, Cox Your View Network, and all the audio podcast platforms. Um, guys, I'm feeling very holiday spirit today. And so, because um, we're, we're in our last day. We're in our last broadcast of 2022, and it's been a great year. But probably the best year for the San Diego Padres that any of us can really remember. You know, I mean, Browner got on the bandwagon a couple of years ago. Alex got to San Diego State in, you know, what year, Alex? 2007, 8, 9, something like that. 2006, right? And and it's certainly the best year the Padres have ever had in my 20 plus years in San Diego. Interesting that the year is going to end and the Padres at the winter meetings, which were right here in San Diego, made big news when, you know, the Xander Bogarts deal being involved, you know, in, in the in the chase for Aaron Judge. I mean, all of these things happened in December, well after the season. And the Padres had this incredible run uh, only to get knocked out in the National League Championship Series by the Phillies. So the Padres had this incredible run of not just baseball, like, you know, where it was exciting, but like just pure relevance, you know, like the end of the season, are they going to make it? Where are they going to be? Who are they going to play? Oh no, the Mets. And then they'll have to go through the Dodgers and they couldn't beat the Dodgers all year long. And they do finally. And then again, off season, big signings, hundreds of millions of dollars being spent, question marks about who will play where. And then, then we get to the very end, right before Christmas. And the one guy that has been a Padre the longest, who, who got a big contract that never really, really paid off, but he saw it through till the very end, and he went from the lows of where the Padres were to the highs of where he's leaving. Will Myers. There ain't going to be no statue. They're not going to retire his number. But Will Myers, he's got a, a small piece of Padre history until today. Now go yeah. It is a, uh, it's a sad day for this show. I don't know how much he will be missed on the field, but I know he will be missed off the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way he became a fan favorite, you know, just because he is who he is, you know, with the goofy hair, with just his food takes and the way he really embraced the city during the playoff run, ending up at social tap, buying people shots after they beat the Dodgers. He's just like a genuinely good dude who has terrible taste in Mexican in Mexican food. But that's other than that, he's like a genuinely good guy. And I think that his contract wasn't bad enough that people soured on him like they did with Hosmer. It was a bad contract because he never lived up to it. But it was... Yeah, I think he was just such a nice guy that people kind of forgave him here. I think us included. 
you know, he, he really didn't do much here the last couple of years and he was making $20 million a year. But, but you know, but you know, I, it's we funny because I'll miss, I'll genuinely miss yeah, the guy. Yeah. What we kind of liked about him though was this, you know, when he came to the Padres, the Padres thought this guy's going to be our star and he's going to be our leader, our captain, you know, our personality. And the fact is, Will Myers never became that, but he told the Padres very early on, I don't want that. And while we all kind of ridiculed him for not wanting that, because who doesn't want to be the leader? I mean, I, if I would love to be the leader, I, I'm not, hey, he's the quarterback. I'm the kicker. I'm not really the leader. He's the leader. But but wouldn't you want to be? Well, Will Myers told everybody really from the get-go, I, I don't want to be. And so what happened is they paid him. He told them, I'm not your quarterback. They went and got Hosmer because they're like, well, now we got to make up for him. Not and, and Hosmer never became that guy either. But the thing about Myers was anything you asked him to do, he would do it. Hey, hey, Will, play first base. Okay. Hey, Will, play third base. I've never, I, I don't know if I really can play it. Yeah, yeah you'll be fine. Play it. Yeah, okay, I'll play it. Play right field. Play left field. Pitch. Hey, hey, can you pitch? <laughs> do you mind, you mind taking an inning here? I mean, pitch. Hit home runs. I'll tell you one thing I loved about Will Myers. Old school. Shows up at the plate. No batting gloves on. Reaches down. Picks up the, the clay. Rubs his hands together. I'm ready. And swing out of his mind. Like his back foot would always come off the, the ground. Like it, it didn't look like a pretty traditional swing. Just swinging out of his shoes. All-star game in San Diego. He's in the home run derby. Not because he really belonged. Padres had to have somebody. He was the guy. That was his best year. Yeah. That was his best year. I'm looking at it right now. He had 259, 28 home runs, 94 RBIs. That was, yeah. that was, that's a damn good year. If we would have done that every year, we would have been happy. Dude, this guy, when he is done with his career, and while he won't be inducted into the Hall of Fame, he'll have lifetime money, and he will have a career that he could be really, really, really proud of. When he moves back to North Carolina, and his, his kids are in school, and his kids say, well, my dad used to be a, a Major League Baseball player. And they're all like, no way, really? Yeah, what's it? Will Myers. People will be like, yeah, he, he had a nice career. A pretty nice career. I mean, how long did he play in major leagues? Well, he was here in Tampa, and then he went to San Diego. He was at the Padres for all these years, and he made it to the National League Championship Series, and he played with all these guys. And then, you know, he went on to the next part of his career. But this guy's going to be a 10, 12, 15-year major league player. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a lot to be proud of. He's already been in the league 10 years. He won Rookie of the Year. He's, he's an all-star. He got an $80 million contract. You know, that is a... That is a very good career. Look, man, it's a sad day. Is it? It's a sad day, man. Is it? It really is. Will was my guy. When everybody doubted you, Will, I kept your back. I will keep your back, Will, because I'm going to see you again. You will return. You will return to Petco in a Padre uniform some way, somehow. I feel it. I feel it. There is a very good – well. It's not a goodbye. It's not a goodbye. One hundred percent, he will not later. play in any other team as long as he did for the Padres. He's not going to go somewhere and play eight years. No, no, else. no, 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 um, no. So there's a this good chance. There's a good chance he signs one day and retires here someday. Oh yeah, this is his home. This is his home, dude. You say that, but I doubt that. Why? I, because I would think that Will Myers is the kind of guy, kind of like Philip Rivers. You know, when his career is over, he'll pack his family up. And he'll go back to North Carolina where they got great Mexican food. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't see Will Myers as a lifelong. Means. Yeah. I, I don't see Will Myers as a lifelong San Diegan where, you know, it's no. like Randy Jones where 25 years from now, there's going to be a Will Myers white queso stand at Petco Park. You know? God, if he would have leaned into it, though, that would have been a great idea, Will. Yeah. Oh, he'd have been he'd have made missed a on that one. It would have made a lot off, off the field money. He could have leaned in on that. The reason he didn't is because of the guy we always talk about that used to work at the Padres, that soured all the relationships, that left the Padres. That guy was so protective that if that guy would have said, this is a funny idea, this the kid could make money, the, the Padres could get behind this, this could be this could be how he you know becomes a legacy a household name in this town. Yeah. You know, 
No, they they shut that down because they didn't think it was funny because it wasn't their idea. But Will Myers, hey, uh, congratulations. You're going to continue your career. Alex, he signed today with the Cincinnati Reds, which, yes. which just on its surface, I'm going to make this comment. Will Myers in his baseball life has made a lot of money and has gotten deep into the postseason. He doesn't have a World Series ring. But like Alex says, he's decorated. A uh, rookie of the year, uh, all-star credentials. When you leave the Padres and go to the Reds, it tells you that not there's just not a lot of people battling to get you to join their team as a free agent. And you take what you can get. You continue to play and have a good time. You continue to mm. bank some money. Mm. Or, I mean, flip side. Or, yeah, you go to a ballpark that is home run friendly. Mm -hmm. You resurrect your once bright career, and you mm -hmm. turn into this year's Brandon Jury and get traded to a contender, and then turn that yeah. around into getting paid seventeen million dollars by the Angels. Okay, so what is right. his contract with Cincinnati? Give us the details as they've been reported. It is a one year, seven point mm -hmm. five million dollar contract, mm -hmm. and the deal will jump to nine point five million based on playing time or if he's traded with a mutual option for the 2024 season. Okay. Well, the, listen, but there's a Ray, reason why if he's traded is in there because I yeah. think if he goes there and he hits 250 and has 20 home runs by the all-star break, he's getting traded. Right. Um, and to your point about Brandon Drury, you might find yourself being traded from a bad team to a good team like the Padres were last year. And then even really not that Brandon Drury was great with the Padres, but he was able to parlay the season he had and he had a supporter. I mean, he's, he's now Brandon Drury has left the Padres to go to the angels. And the reporting on that story is, is that Phil Nevin, the former great Padre, uh, by the way, Phil Nevin, Will Myers, kind of the same guy in Padre history. That's all. But what I'm saying is Nevin loves the kid Drury. Help and Drury bring loves him up the angels. Through, right, help bring him up through the minor leagues. Drury grew up an angels fan, as I understand mm -hmm. it. And so two years, 17 million, if Will Myers goes to Cincinnati and does what you predict, Alex, yeah, he could find himself maybe traded into a playoff race. If Will Myers stays healthy for the Reds, he's going to, he's going to hit home runs there. I mean, that's just his style. He hit home runs at Peco. He can hit home runs in Cincinnati. And if he's, his problem is, can he stay healthy now? You know, he hasn't really been able to stay healthy. And if he can somehow recreate those magical 60 games he had in 2020 in Cincinnati. He's going to be, he's going to be a very sought after player in major yeah. league baseball come trade deadline. Hey, good for you, Will. Good, good for, for you. Sure. Good luck. And I hope, uh, hope it all works out for you. Can I say one thing though, mm. to go against JT, the brick and kind of bring it back that to that yesterday. Mm -hmm. There's no way the Padres are trading to tease right now because, Oh, Oh, I agree with that. There's, I no mean, way I, you... I, I knew that yesterday. Yeah. But, but you can't listen. We, the Padres, supporters, fans, critics, opinionists, whomever, the report, everybody, Peter Seidler, A.J. Preller, Bob Melvin, down to Manny Machado, even with the reporting this week that Manny Machado is going to opt out of his deal. Tell us something we don't know. Right. Everybody wants to see the Padres with Soto, Tatis, mm -hmm. Machado, Bogarts, and Cronenworth everybody wants to see it's, what that looks like. And by the way, it doesn't mean that JT's wrong per se. It just, they could have been shopping him. They, they might've been shopping him. It's absolutely a possibility. Mm -hmm. People say, well, if it was such a possibility, how come it wasn't leaked? Fair question. Not everything. You think everything, but not everything does. Did anybody know that Bob Melvin was going to be the manager of the Padres? Did, did Until anybody he was, know that? no. Right, right. But everybody seemed to know that Deion Sanders was going to Colorado. Some things did get anybody leaked, know else. Carlos Correa was going to drop the Giants and sign with the Mets? Or did right. it just no. happen? Did, did anybody know that Lincoln Riley was going to become the head coach at USC? Did no. anybody know that USC and UCLA were leaving for the Pac-12? Some stuff gets leaked and other things don't. Well, one guy did. I guess so. So, look, is JT wrong? Don't know for sure. Could the Padres have been shopping Tatis last year? Why not? Could could the Padres eventually shop Tatis? Why not? Oh, because he has a no trade clause. Who cares? Right. But that happens all the time. But where JT is is, I assume he's wrong. Is that th we have to see we have to see Soto, 
Tatis, Machado, Bogarts, and not in that Bogarts, Soto, Tatis, <laughs> and no particular Machado, order. Chrono. We we have to see what it looks right. like because those are the before you could ever consider. And by the way, Tatis needs to come back and be who Tatis was, so that somebody would say the problems that he brings with him are, are worth, worth it. it because he's this good of a player. So, Look, the, the, and the bottom line is, I think they're going to give it a year. Period. They're going to ride. They're going to they're going to play this thing out for a year, and if it gets to the World Series, you'll deal with it after that. Because Manny opting out opens the window for the money to be available to have all them with the. And if you take Manny away now, at the end of the year, if Manny's still on the roster with a new contract, yeah, one of them probably has to go because Soto's going to want a ton of money. So for me. I think you have to let this play out to the end of the year because no other team will have this much talent on it. You let's can't just, just give one away before you even put the thing together. So let's say at the end of the year, at the end of the year, and this wasn't going to be my point, but at the end of the year, if Tatis comes back and he hits 290 with 35 home runs and he looks like Tatis, if Machado opts out but they re-sign him, and what happens if Soto hits 250 again with 20 home runs? Then he's the one is who's got to go. Right. Is he the guy that you want to keep? Probably not. Correct. So uh, that's why I think you've got to give it a year. Yep. It just makes sense to give it a year because yeah. so there's so many variables right now that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And I think that letting it play out will be is the smartest thing. But my, my original point was going to be is they haven't re-signed Jerks and Profile. I don't think they are. They lost Josh Bell, Brandon Jury, and now Will Myers. That's four dudes that were playing every single day for you. And now you brought in Xander Bogarts and Matt Carpenter, and you're bringing back Tatis. Like you need Tatis as for depth. I mean, not just for depth, but you need him on your team to play every day. Be bodies. Like so, so Cronenworth will fill the the one the, the first base. So that's just that's fi figured itself out. But who's filling in for Profar? Probably Soto. And then who's filling in for Soto? Probably Tatis. Grisham's coming back. Carpenter playing when a guy needs a day off. Like, I still think this team needs more guys. I don't think they're at the point where you start trading guys. They need more guys. Yeah. So it's it just isn't it amazing, though, how yesterday JT the Brick comes on the air. We're talking about Franco Harris, the 50 years of the Immaculate Reception, the 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 Raiders and the Steelers on Christmas Eve, and the, the, the ceremony that's going to happen for Franco Harris. And from out of nowhere, Franco Harris just drops dead. And and that was the conversation that was being had yesterday. And JT, my man, I mean, this guy is a veteran in this business. JT unsolicited says, hey, and by the way, I want to tell you guys, I was right. I had this source, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And when I am right, I'm riding into town on a white horse and I'm circling that radio station. And I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And it amazes me. I don't know how many views it got on Twitter, Alex. Um, I don't know. I mean, it had when I last night saw it, and I just caught up late. I think there were five thousand plus. Yeah, it's way views. more than that. By the time I logged in last night, like ten thirty, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> okay." It crushed because that that, crushed? that whole Tatis that whole Tatis trade thing from JT that really yeah. had nothing to do with us. He tweeted no, it. nothing. It had nothing to do with him being on the show. We never had him on to talk about his Tatis trade. We never once had him on to talk about Tatis. We well, I don't really him. care. I, I just, I, my, no, my I'm not, thought is I'm that, not, not defending having him on my point being that like, he just did it because he's going to yeah. die yeah, on I that thought, horse. I thought having him, <laughs> I thought having him on was great. Cause if he does have that info and it turns out to be factual as much as I disagree with it and wouldn't want it, there is somebody who knew and was telling people what the deal was. And he, and we had him on our show. He, so that, I mean, th th this video from yesterday has 13,000 views in less than 24 hours. And the comments are remarkable. How angry people get at JT for having this source, for JT sharing this opinion, for us having him on. And I'm going to say to everybody here at the end of the year, you got to really, you got to really start thinking about the things you say to other people. And I mean this in this way. From my perspective, I, I I took a Twitter break this year, and it was a really good thing for me. Um, why why does everybody think you can just say whatever you want, and you can, but why? Like today, I was in a I was in a doctor's office, and I got into this uh, into this elevator, 
And I was like, looking at this guy, I'm like, I never say anything to this guy. But on social media, people think I can say whatever I want to to you. I can be as mean and as nasty and as bitter and I curse you out and try and get you fired from your job and I want you can't. What is wrong with everybody? People I mean, do that because it's faceless, it's nameless, and there's no penalty. There's and, rarely and, a penalty to it. And the conversation goes on. Like, it goes on. We, we keep having the same conversation over mm -hmm. and over again. Why are people such a-holes on social media? I really think this year, I said this earlier, my whole thought about 2023 is going to be about growing. Growing the size of our YouTube audience. Growing the size of our revenues. Growing the size of our staff, et cetera, et cetera. Everything's going to be about growth. One thing I think I'm going to do to try and help achieve more growth, spend less time on this and more time on this. Spend less time on Twitter and spend more time on sales. Seriously. Because people in the, the social space who are this upset because JT has what he says is his source about Tatis being possibly traded, you're this angry about it? All right. Yeah, listen. Care. I know, me neither. I know. So I wish everybody a very happy holidays. Wish cuz I am I'm in a JT great mood. JT texted in... me last night. I don't know like I, I don't know what time he got off the air. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, uh, so you like the interaction? Can I get a t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I know he's kind of on us like like we maybe like, you know, spread this stuff. I mean, listen, we all we're, we're all big mouths. We're all I mean, I'm not an idiot. If I put a and no disrespect, Franco, rest in peace. Like if I put something about him talking about Franco, it may not do much. If I if I put that exact clip that I put up, I know what's I know what's coming next. Right. Of I'm course. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. That's why I wasn't offended or didn't care about what anybody said. I'm like, you guys, you guys played along. Thanks. All right, listen, let me just say one thing before we uh, hit this break. I want to remind everybody. Um, I know it's the holiday season. You may not be out like shopping for cars, but if you decide that, you know, this is the time of the year that you want to do it next week, Penske San Diego.com. This is when you get these killer deals last week of the year, Penske San Diego.com use their website. It's easy because it'll make things move really fast. Look, they've got 12 different brands or excuse me, 12 different stores and nine different brands, but on the website, everything expedite the process and shop online at Penske P E N S K E Penske San Diego.com. You said it's a sad day. It is a bit of a sad day. Tell you another story coming right back. This is Kaplan and crew. Hey, great friends. It is Thursday. Today is December 22nd. This is Kaplan and crew. And we come to you from the seven mile casino studio, seven mile casino.com. It is our final broadcast and podcast and TV show of 2022. Uh, all of us are really excited about the year that we've just had. And, uh, I know for me, I'm really looking forward to the year ahead. Uh, I've got my mind focused on just growing the show and, uh, accepting help when people are offering it. And so whatever you're kind of thinking about right now, I'm not talking about new year's resolutions. Ooh, I'm going to start losing weight January 1st. I'm not talking about that nonsense. I'm talking about a, a personal reset of I've come to the end of another calendar year and here's where my mind's at. And here's where I want to go. And so this is what I'm, I'm doing. I'm, I'm planting seeds right now. And I'm watching those seeds just sort of to grow. You know, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to manifest all the things I want to have happen in the upcoming year. Um, Grande, Brown Man, mm -hmm. you're in mm -hmm. the Seven Mile Casino Studios. They've been such great partners for us in the uh, previous year. And we've already signed a new deal with Seven Mile for the upcoming year. So we appreciate that. We encourage all of the great friends. If you're playing blackjack or poker or table games, if you want great food with Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, smoke-free environment, and a great location only seven minutes south of downtown San Diego, Seven Mile Casino is the place for you. Uh, what are you guys thinking about today? I'm just curious, like past year going into 23, I know I'm getting all, you know, kind of philosophical today, but what's on your minds as we wrap up one and go into a new one? I'm not really retrospective at all. I'm not in that mood at all, to be honest with you guys. Like, I'm not, I'm not at the year end mentality of like looking back and being thankful for everything that's happened so far this year or what happened this year. I'm not there yet. Uh, maybe that's more for next week. Right now, I'm like, my house looks like a like a Macy's wrapping station. Nice. So kind of that's consuming me right now. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I'm, you know. Personal life, I'm supposed to go to Oxnard, but the entire house I'm supposed to go to has COVID. So, hey -o. yeah, we're doing a little audible right now. We're trying to figure that out. Is that why we were taking off tomorrow? Because you were traveling to Oxnard? 
No, tomorrow I'm supposed to. It's got an appointment, uh, man. I'm supposed to. No, I'll tell you. I'm supposed to have a very lovely, lovely lunch date with my grandmother, who's 84 years old. Hey, oh, shout out tomorrow. to grandmas. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I'm still figuring out if that's happening mm-hmm. because of the situation that's happening in Oxnard. Everybody's fine. Everybody feels great, but the positive test won't go away. So I just received in the mail. I, I just received the other day because I got an email from somebody in, you know, the U S government, Hey, um, we're giving out COVID tests this holiday season, you know, under the assumption, like, Hey, you're going to go see grandma. You're going to go see your mom. You know, uh, you're you're, like me, we're going to mammoth with, with six kids, you know? So, um, they assume that you're going to be in close quarters and who knows, here comes the next outbreak. Right. So, um, I got an email and they said, you can receive home kits for free. I got them. So I clicked it. I did it. I, and they showed up yesterday. I got these free COVID tests from the government, I guess. How many are there? Four? There's, uh, I think it's four. Um, yeah, yeah, I, it's, it's not me and Mar at this point. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, people back home are a little bit more. You've had it it more times than anybody with blood in their veins. You'll be fine. (laughs) I got the the Padiva variant inside. Yeah. Go see that grandma. You'll be patient zero. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You talk about um, in your house right now, it looks like a big Macy's, uh, you know, like gift wrapping center, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, tell me what you guys would do on this situation. So I ordered a gift for someone on Amazon. And um, on Saturday of this past weekend, I received a message. Hey, it's been delivered. So I come home and it's not here. And I've been trying to figure out on the Amazon app, like, where do I communicate to you guys that it's not here? So I finally, I don't know if it was stolen or not, but I finally figure it out. And like, I'm talking to what I think is a bot, you know, I think it's like AI Uh consultation. And I'm like, yeah, listen. So um, I ordered this, it was delivered and it's not here. And they're like, okay, well, you know, sometimes things don't get delivered, even though they say they are delivered. I'm like, oh, look, you guys, big company, right? Like millions and millions and millions of people, transactions all day long. Vans are flying all over the place. I mean, some can't all be a hundred percent. There got to be some mishap along the way, but don't you usually get like a picture or something? Doesn't the Amazon delivery person? Not every time, but yeah, Yeah. not every time. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, DoorDash, yes. Amazon, no. But this is a big box and they would have had to have left it on my front porch. And I, I'm not saying that it could not have been stolen. I'm just saying it probably seems like a lower percentage that it was. So they they told me Amazon, they're like, well, wait till Thursday today. And then if you still don't have it, then let us know. Then we have so much money, we'll just resend it. Well, what they Which said is, is what happens. What, what, what they said is they said, if you don't get it, we'll do the refund and then you can go buy it again. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, also, yeah, yeah. if you get stuff from Amazon, if it's too big, they'll tell yeah. you just keep it. Like, keep oh, it. bro, listen, Rachel bought for Wait, if you get something that's not yours and it's too big, they tell you to keep it. Yeah. No, no, no. no they no, don't want to no. come get it. No, what do you, true. But, but here's the thing. Let's say you order a piece of furniture, right? You order a big dresser or a dresser, grill yeah, dr- shows up, right? Um, and, and it, it's marked up here and it's not, and it's just not what you wanted. I mean, you wanted a brand new, perfect new piece of furniture. It comes, the drawer doesn't open and close, whatever. Mm-hmm. They're like, Hey, I, I don't, I got to return this man. It's not working. And they're like, okay, well, guess what? Keep it. And we're going to send you a new one. Right. Like they, they literally do not want to deal with the return mm-hmm. of a big item. Yep. You know, and that's not a secret. Like everybody knows that. You just don't want big items in your house and they bank on you got nowhere to put this stuff because I ordered a grill. The grill comes. It's so big in the box and it's the wrong grill. So I'm like, yo, y'all need to take this back. And the guy was like, eh, we'll refund you the money. Keep it. Keep it. And I was like, uh, OK, I prepared for a fight. Yeah. I'll keep it. <laughs> I'll take my money. Offer up there for a reason, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you got me. You got yeah. me. I'll take the money. That's never happened to me before. That's how I, I, I also don't order things that big. I don't, right. I don't trust things that big coming to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. It just seems like, you know, what if you get like a, a puny little dude, you know, like all of a sudden he's going to bring this up, you know, three flights of stairs. You got to help him. Yeah. I ain't going to help nobody. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. There's a guy that hired a mover to move two blocks away. I ain't in it. We, we, we need Facts, to bro. help you bring in a, laund- a, a new washer. No, thanks. New guy, new guy, Coastal Elite, Padiva. Dude, that money. Some, they don't want to lift that stuff. 
and they don't want to bring it down from your house and they know people don't want to go through the trouble of lifting it themselves. So Amazon is such a massive company and they make so much money. They can tell you to keep something that's like 300 bucks. Like, ah, yeah. keep it. Yeah, I know. I um, Here's I, your I money gotta, back, by the way. I got to figure it out though. Like I, I'm really pissed because I wanted <laughs> this gift. And I, here's some money. Yeah, right. I wanted the, but I wanted the gift for Christmas. And now I don't think I'm going to have it for Christmas. That sucks. Unless it, maybe it'll come to them. Maybe it's at your door maybe. right now. Go to the store. It got yeah. stolen. Go to the store. Get another one. No. Nah. Anyway. All right. Listen, it is uh, Thursday afternoon. This is our final broadcast and podcast of the year. For those of you that listen on 1090 next week, actually starting tomorrow, it's all best of shows. And we'll be back on the air on Tuesday, January 3rd. For those of you that are watching on Cox on Channel 4 San Diego, and it's also Channel 4 in Santa Barbara and Everywhere in between, it's channel 118 on Cox and Spectrum Cable. We will have best of shows for you guys on television next week. So if you're a, a, a podcaster, catch up. If you're a YouTuber, there's plenty there that you haven't seen, I'm sure. And uh, for TV viewers and radio listeners, we'll have best of shows for you. So I said in the last segment, the Will Myers thing, it, it's kind of a sad day. I think I'm exaggerating. Player leaves. Just so happens that this guy, as Alex pointed out, very endearing guy, played anywhere you asked him to play, never complained. You never heard from the guy. You know, he just told you from the beginning, I don't want to be your leader. Right. You know? And so he didn't really perform up to the, the, the dollars of his contract. But on the other hand, he, he made it all the way through and pretty rare to see a guy do that nowadays. So hasta la vista, you know, Will Myers. And we were kind of joking, sad day. But I will tell you this, in the history of San Diego sports, it is a sad day today. There is a part of, of today that is a bit sad. I didn't want to talk about this yesterday. I wasn't really sure how I was going to fit it in, but I've heard from a lot of people. So I, I want to at least talk about it a little bit today. Very, very sad to see, especially this time of the year, right? Franco Harris, like literally 72 years old in his sleep, just doesn't wake up. But he's 72. Like my son was telling me the other day, he's like, dad, that's, that's old. I'm like, it's 72 is not old. He's like, just because you're closer to 72 than I am doesn't mean that 72 is not old. And I started to think to myself, maybe he's right. I mean, maybe 72 is old. You know, uh, I know plenty of people that are in their 50s. That I told you a story earlier this year, 50-year-old guy running down the beach, totally healthy guy, drops out of a heart attack. I know another guy in his 50s, early 50s, he jumped in the water uh, in San Francisco to race uh, a swimming race and, and freaking had a heart attack in the middle of the water. 50 years old, healthy guy. So I said, maybe he's right. Maybe 72 is old. But like my parents are in their mid-70s, so I don't want to admit that. You know, I've got some friends that are in their early 80s. I don't want to admit that 70 is old, but it is. Mm -hmm. And things like this could happen. But when you're 31 years old, uh, that's, that's just a terrible shame. It happens all the time, of course, sadly, and to people younger than that. But Ronnie Hillman was a really, really great San Diego State running back. And just yesterday, uh, or maybe it was announced this morning, um, died at 31 years old. I, I, from what I was reading, he had battled cancer. Um, Ronnie Hillman. Quick, quick battle with cancer. Yeah. Is that what the deal is, Alex? A, a quick battle, meaning like he kind of got it and it got to him like. Yeah, it was a very rare form and very aggressive form. I'm trying to remember when he was diagnosed, but it was this year. Like it was quick. Yeah. So Ronnie Hillman, when I when I think about this young man, I think about he's look, Marshall Falk's the greatest running back in San Diego State football history. OK, that's fine. OK, but from Marshall Falk, it had been a long time, I feel like, until you got to the Ronnie Hillman types. And then the guys that Is followed Adam Muema. I think the, I think the Aztecs had nine 1000 yard rushers in a row. Now they, I'm not saying it was nine different running backs, but I think nine, they had nine seasons of a, of a running back going for a thousand in a row. Yeah. Did it start with Ronnie Hillman back in like the 2010, 11, 12 range? You look at it because Ronnie Hillman was a really, really nice player for San Diego State. And he had two really excellent years, which, by the way, led him to being, I want to say, like a third-round draft choice of the Denver Broncos. And as I recall, did was he part of a Super Bowl championship team or was he on the yes. receiving end? He was on the Broncos when they beat the Panthers. The Super oh, Bowl 50. oh, right. You say Super Bowl what? 50. Super Bowl 5-0? Yes. The Broncos beat. Oh, 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 right. Super Bowl 50 in San Francisco when, when, uh, and Cam didn't jump on the ball. 
Right. Bron- and when, yeah. when Peyton Manning uh, yeah. led, I say led, he wasn't great Peyton Manning, but that was, so Super Bowl 50, Ronnie Hillman is on that Super Bowl 50 Broncos team. Yeah. And the the Aztec run started in 2009 with Walter Casey. Okay, Walter Casey. Very good. Yes. I believe that was when. And then uh, Ronnie Hillman. Two Adam, years in a row. Adam Muema. Yep. Chase Price. Okay, don't remember DJ, him. DJ Pumphrey, Rashad okay. Penny. Well, that's the yeah. Pumphrey Penny era, you know, where these guys had over 2,000 yards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ronnie Hillman, he was a good player. You know, he, I, and I, I really should go back and look at who were the players on those those San Diego State teams. I assume that was probably the first iteration of Brady Hoke coaching those teams. Coached them one season. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't remember it was, um, I mean, is Kirk Morrison's got to be older than that, although there may have been some crossover. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, Kevin O'Connell. Maybe 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 Kevin's older than that. Also, that was the year after I left. I graduated in 2009. I'm mm-hmm. trying to find the 2010 roster. Yeah, I'm trying to think who the quarterback was, and that was the year that Ryan Lindley was there. He ran, oh. for, he threw for 3,830 yards and 28 touchdowns that year. Ronnie Hillman ran for 1,500 yards and 17 touchdowns that year. And who was the coach? Does it say? I mean, that year was that was that Ryan Long? Hill, nine and oh. four. Okay, Brady was – and what did they do that year? Did they go to – they say which bowl they game? They won or? the Poinsettia Bowl against Navy. Okay, I remember that. I was there. I, I was on I was the there field that after. night. Yeah, Same. I was there that night. Wow. Well, hey, listen, that's sad, dude. 31 years old to have been as decorated as Ronnie was at San Diego State, to have been you know, uh, drafted into the NFL, to own a Super Bowl ring, to have played behind Peyton Manning. Um, that, that was a hell of a career, but at 31 years old, man, that is awfully sad to see a kid, you know, that young. Yeah. That's terrible. So, um, listen, here, here's what I'll say. It is the holiday season. Um, we should all kind of take a second here and, um, really not to get like ridiculously cosmic on you, but to just take a second to be grateful for your life. And for most importantly, your health, assuming you're healthy um, and, and know that, you know, even if everything's not perfect, cause it's not for anybody, you know, you, you get to live to fight another day, you know, and, and, and unfortunately for, you know, a 31 year old kid like Ronnie, that's not happening. Yeah. He was you know? diagnosed in August and um, it was uh, from the athletic a rare but highly aggressive neo, neoplasm form of cancer that primarily affects young African Americans with sickle cell trait. Oh no. Yeah. It's too bad. That's really sad. But again, you know, use use Ronnie Hillman's name, um his, you know, wh- why you know him because he was a good football player, but just use that that to just say, "Hey, hold on a second. Let me just have a minute here to just say, "Man, I'm grateful for my health." I am grateful for my children and their health. You know, I'm, I'm grateful that even though things aren't perfect in my life, you know, like right now, my Peloton, for example, you know, it won't, the seat won't go up and down because it's, I've sweat so much on it that the bolt is so rusted that I can't turn the handle. And now my Peloton doesn't work anymore. And so, you know what? That doesn't mean jack squat to me. That was in- intended that, to add some levity. I was going to say that wow. was a reach there. Okay, uh, but that was uh, intended to be, to add levity uh, to a very yes. serious conversation. I got some not that much of a you. shallow ready, dick. Okay, I got some levity. You're for ready you. to turn left on this conversation. Yeah. I am that, telling you, you went with a rusted bolt on your Peloton. Yeah, but I will so say this. Your butt. But I will say this. Peloton has been outstanding in terms of customer service. I've sent them a picture. I told them what the problem was. They're sending me out new parts. They said, if you can't fix it yourself, we'll, uh, we'll send a technician. Here's a YouTube video. Browner, I'm going to use a YouTube video to try and fix something myself. Shout out, Shout out baby. Shout I had out. to do Wish that. Best of luck. Follow the instructions. I had to do that because my knob got uncalibrated. Mm. So like when I would turn, it wouldn't, the, uh, the resistance wouldn't turn with it. Mm-hmm. You had a problem working on and Which knob. is like literally... If you if you turn your knob and it's not working, that's not a good thing. Mm, okay, so what good. happened? They send you parts. You get a. Pill. They send me a YouTube video uh-huh. of how to recalibrate the knob. Your knob, my knob, dude. 
Dude, the other day, I'm trying. I'm like fighting with this Peloton. I'm fighting with this thing. Like, come on, man, it's rusted. Dude. My daughters want to use it. I can't move the freaking seat up and down. Dude, I I go to push it, and I like I I realize now because I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt on the show today. I I like cut my like not cut, but I like hurt my <laughs> forearm. I like Ugh, and it like cut my. I was bleeding. Stupid man, cut. Yeah, you probably poked yourself. Listen, here's good news. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's some levity. The tyranny is over. We are free, people. The okay, tyranny is over. We, we are, are free. free of Directv. It is official. It has happened. The NFL Sunday Ticket will now be available on YouTube TV. Thank you, somebody. The gates have opened. You are free. A la carte. You don't need it anymore. It's so funny you're saying this, though, Browner. And great job of getting us kind of re redirected. Dude, this is a sports store. Okay, but here's the thing. I've heard a lot of people already griping. The 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 DirecTV user who's accustomed to Sunday ticket being on DirecTV yeah. now seems to be upset because that guy's got to go to YouTube TV. Whereas, for someone like myself, who I love YouTube TV. It costs you less money. And, he, and I've got cable, and I love YouTube TV, but oh. loving it, um, now I'm hearing all the, the DirecTV people complaining. So if you if you tell me YouTube will allow me to a la carte purchase the NFL Sunday ticket, then I'm on board with Browner's praise of the move. But yes. if you're telling me I have to get YouTube TV and then this is an add-on, now we're having issues because YouTube TV don't have – Valley Sports San Diego. So if also you're true. if you're telling also me true. that it's an a la carte, which I believe it is, mm -hmm. if you go to all you need is a YouTube account, I believe. Yes. And you can buy a premium channel content as a separate a la carte yes. item. Yes. Then I'm on board with you. But if you are telling me I need both, like I need a direct TV previously to have then i'm pissed off still now the price will still be the same for direct tv for uh nfl sunday take the price will be the same due to, con to contractual obligations with the nfl cbs and blah 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 blah, blah. but will they can... still give me my student discount that I, that's a question <laughs> that no one has asked yet are you still a student buddy oh yeah for 100 bucks yeah yeah i'll take it everybody in everybody in life is still a student we You're are learning. all the earth every day we are all Earth students. We just we need to, we just need an EDU password. I think somebody can help us with that. <laughs> all right, hold on one second, guys. Uh, we are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. I want to remind everybody who's listening that if um, losing weight is going to be on your mind at the beginning of the year, why wait? You can do it right now. Alex has lost twenty three pounds with our partner at iThrive, iThrive MD. You take this tiny little injection once a week, and everybody's losing weight everybody's appetite is being suppressed. You're training your mind how to, how you're supposed to eat or how much you're supposed to when most of us all overeat. 858-240-1497. Alex has lost 23 pounds. Dr. Fry was on the air last week. She's lost 30 pounds. The photographer from Alex's wedding has lost 60 pounds on this product. It's fully FDA approved and it's guaranteed to work. You can lose weight right now, even during the holidays with iThrive. Go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com. Click on the iThrive logo and learn all about iThrive lean. All right, coming up, I want to tell you a great story about a, a tremendous San Diegan who's had a world-class sports career that ended just a couple weeks ago. I'm going to tell you that story. Coming right back to the Seven Mile Casino Studios here on Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. If you're just getting with us, uh, we've been talking about a bunch of stuff so far today. Will Myers, Leaving the Padres, going to the Cincinnati Reds has been one story we've been talking about. Uh, our friend JT the Brick in Las Vegas comes on the show yesterday to talk about Franco Harris, the Raiders, the Steelers, the 50-year anniversary of the Immaculate Reception. And before he leaves, he decides to go off on how Fernando Tatis is eventually going to get traded by the Padres, which goes viral and turns into, a, I mean, just craziness on Twitter. We've been talking about that. Um, also been talking about, you know, what you're supposed to do when an Amazon delivery says it's delivered, but it's not delivered or how you're supposed to fix a Peloton when you have no skills of any kind. I mean, we've been all over the place today, but Grande and Brown, man, um, a story that you'll not hear other places around town is the story of Mike Riley 
And I don't mean Mike Riley, the former Charger coach. I mean Mike <laughs> Riley, who has forever been the voice of Iron Man. And here's a quick story for you guys. In 2009, I go to Hawaii with a buddy of mine who was doing the Iron Man. And um, he finished the race. But at the race goes until midnight. And so at like 11 at p.m., I'm standing out there watching the runners come through. And I, I've realized that the people who win the Ironman, you know, those guys, there's no crowd when these pros come in. The, the best time to finish is the very end when the place is jam-packed and everybody's trying to motivate these people who are finishing at the last seconds, right? So Mike Riley's on, on the microphone. And I, I remember him saying, and I'm paraphrasing, but he goes, hey, guys, um, and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And the clock is ticking down, you know, uh, five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes. And Mike is saying, hey, guys, there's one person still on the course, one person. And this was a guy who was a wrestler at like Iowa, and he was on the NBC's The Biggest Loser. And he was he was trying to make it in before the clock runs out. And it's now minute. 30 seconds, 20 seconds. And we're all waiting at the finish line and the guy doesn't make it zeros, zero, zero, zero. And then about 20 seconds later, the crowd is going nuts. The crowd is cheering. Everybody's losing their minds. Right. And, and Mike is on the mic. Here he comes. Here he comes. Everybody let's hear it for him. And the crowd is losing their minds. And the guy crosses the finish line. And Mike says something to the effect of, you know, congratulations, you did it. But you see every other person before the clock struck zero, when that person came through the finish line, Mike Riley was there to say, you are an Iron Man. You are an Iron Man. You are an Iron Man. But when this guy came through, fellas, he never said you are an Iron Man. Because while the guy completed the race, he didn't do it in the right time. Oof. And that mm. is what every triathlete and every person who's ever done an Iron Man, that's the crowning moment. When you're standing there at the finish line, and Mike Riley, the voice of the Iron Man, says, Scott Kaplan, you are an Iron Man. That's the moment you're waiting for. And that guy didn't get it that night. And I stood right there at that finish line, guys, and I went, I got to do that. I got to do that. And the next year, one year later, I had a finish at the Iron Man, and Mike Riley was yelling and screaming. And we knew each other because he's from San Diego. And he'd, he'd listened on the radio all year that I was training and I was going to do this. And he freaking gave me the finish of an, of a lifetime. Like you won. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, believe me, it was late. It was real late. It, it was, it, it's not the kind of time where I tell me I'm not bragging about how fast I did it. Trust me. It was late. And he announced me, Alex, like as if I'd won the race and I reacted as if I'd won the race. Well, here it is. Southern California. You did it, Scotty Kaplan. You are an Iron Man. Yes, you are. Yeah. Woo! Yes, Scott. Play your home to the yes, largest popular sports show in Southern California. Follow my Mike Moses from St. Albert, Alberta, Canada. And now Tarkinson from Delaware. Anyway, all right. So there it is. So like to <laughs> whoa, me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Way, Whoa, Dude, I was whoa, whoa, baby. Wait a minute. I never saw that video. You before. never seen that? Oh my god. Dude's bro. Yo. Bro, you cut, fam. <laughs> you cut, Mr. Universe. What, my boy? I know you had it. Look at you flexing at the end, like fam. That's you. That's you, fam. Oh, I know. How can Thanks, I ever get bro. back into that kind of shape, man? <laughs> hey, Mike bro. Riley was, yeah. If I would have seen that video, I wouldn't have been challenging you to all this stuff. I'd be challenging you to. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing you every day. That's why I'm always challenging you. If I'd have seen that video, I'd have been like, nah, you got it, brother. Yeah. You so, could be so me in swimming. You good. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's that's everybody's dream. Like if, if you're gonna do an Iron Man. You want Mike Riley at the end to say, you are an Iron Man. And I was lucky enough that I knew Mike and he knew me and he knew the show and he knew what I was doing all year. And you heard him say, you know, for Southern California's top radio show, blah, blah, blah. But my man, Mike Riley has retired. He, he, he's called his last race. You'll never have that guy yell that phrase ever again. 
Guy has written a book. Guy has been part of the podcast. Guy has been on the radio show many times. And at the end of the year, I just wanted to tell this story. Our last show of the year. Here's the voice of the Iron Man, Mike Riley. Mike, good afternoon. I know you've met Browner and Grande here. Uh, glad you're on the show today, man. How are you? I am fantastic. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good to be on. Wow. <laughs> it's an honor. Mike, it was an honor for me uh, all those years ago. And I tell people all the time, you know, the one thing about doing an Ironman, and anybody can do it. I mean, I know most people look at it and they say they can't, but they can. The one thing I know about that race is all the training and then getting to race day and then getting to the finish line. Not finishing was never an option. I was always going to get there. No matter what, I was getting there. But because you have that in you, I, I literally use the lessons learned from the training and from the race day itself mm. every day of my life. Every day I use the lessons learned. What, what has you retiring from doing something that is so great, that gets you to travel the world, that gets people to want you to scream their names? Why retire? That's a great question, Scotty. I, there's, there was a lot of reasons. You know, I, wanna, I went through a cycle of doing a lot of traveling, obviously, when my kids were young and they're older now and they have kids. And I didn't want that cycle to continue with my grandkids. I didn't want to miss birthday parties and anniversaries. And, and you know, I'm on the microphone from 5 a.m. till midnight at events all over the world. And it's starting to take longer for my voice to recover. And I was a little worried about that. Uh, so... And it's just time. I just felt in my gut it's time. I I will miss calling out those words to everybody. I've done it almost a half a million times. And 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 for what people have told me, it changes their lives. It, I, I believe it's the four greatest words in sport because it takes care of the masses. You know, it, when, when I'd hear great sports people like Enberg and whomever, you know, call a home run or call a soccer goal or call a – a, a touchdown pass. They're all fantastic, but it was for one individual. What I got to do was for the world, was for everyday people like yourself who decide to do an Ironman in the 12-month period of time and come across the finish line over 140.6 miles. So when I call them an Ironman, it's their diploma for the rest mm -hmm. of their lives. And no matter how the rest of their life goes, they're always an Ironman, and it changes them to be better. It, to me, it's simple, but it's a very tough retirement, but it's one that I want to do. And, and it's just time, just time. Yeah. yeah. Mike Riley's book is called finding my voice tales from Iron Man, the world's greatest endurance race. And, um, listen, even just yesterday, you were telling me, cause I, I wanted to have you on the show yesterday. You were unavailable hanging with the grandchildren. Where, where were you? What were you doing? Yeah, we went to see Scrooge at Balboa Cup Park in San Diego. And, you know, it. I, those are the type of things. My schedule now, I've got six brothers and sisters, and they always want to do things together. We're very close, and we're doing something this summer. And they sent out an email. I was the first one to answer back. I said, I'll be there, you know, because I had nothing on the schedule of events, being gone for the weekend. And my younger sister goes, well, that's a first. You know, you said <laughs> You saying you'll be there before anybody else, so you're right. I mean, the priorities changed, and uh, I've given how many, weeks a, are, how many weeks a year would you have to travel to be the voice of the Ironman? And and I don't know if you have a number of miles, but these races are not in just Arizona or you know Oceanside or the, these races are around the world. They're in Lake Placid, New York, Frankfurt, Germany, you know, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, they, they are all over the world, uh, Alaska this year. And so, you know, I, I'd spend, uh, you know, 100 to 120 nights in a hotel room, if that tells you anything, because an Ironman event on a Sunday, uh, I'm in town by Wednesday. We've got ceremonies, the welcome ceremony, IMC, the uh, award ceremony, obviously, the, the kids fun run. It's just a week of events. Uh, so at the end of that week, I, I'm, I'm fine. I was finding myself. You know, after the pandemic, I was, I, God, I'm wiped out. And, you know, I'm in pretty decent shape. And, but they're just, they're just long, hard weeks. They're great weeks and satisfying and passionate. But uh, I just said, you know, it's it just, it just time. I want to be able to talk to my grandkids when I'm 80, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, was, Mike, was this your full-time job 
it was voice because you just mentioned it Wednesday through Sunday and probably even, you know, well into Monday. Was was this a full time job for you? Well, it it wasn't. It wasn't. I I produced my income all my years in endurance sports. I, I sold, you know, for the rock and roll marathon. I sold and helped start active.com, the largest registration company in the world now. And uh, I, I worked going into an office with those types of companies. So I was, I, I was endurance to seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So when I go to an event, I was representing the company I was with. I sold sock and running shoes. You know, I did, did all that stuff, but it was always built in endurance. I learned early on, I loved it. And I go, you know what? I'm going to produce income in it. And then when people wanted to pay me to get on the microphone, the first events I did in the late seventies and eighties in San Diego, I just go out and announce just because it was fun. And then one time I said, no, I'm going to run the event. I can't announce it. The race director, I thought they were going to lose their, you know what? I go, what's wrong? Well, I want you to announce. I go, I want to run. They go, we'll pay, you. we'll pay you. I go, are you serious? You'll pay me? I said, okay, I can always run. So it, it built, it built from there. And I just, I just found it such a great pleasure to congratulate someone when they did something great in their life. I was the one to be able to put a star on their forehead and, and let the world know that they were an Iron Man. They were someone that people now can aspire to be. Uh, what, there's nothing greater in life than being able to congratulate someone for something great that they've done. Mike, I know that you, you said almost half a million Iron Man final calls. Um, sure. What are some of the most like memorable? Obviously, like when you tune into NBC for the Iron Man, there's all these incredible stories of of who's competing and who's finishing. Is there a few or one that stand out particularly in your mind? There are, brother. And you know, uh, in my mind, everybody's got a backstory, and they've gone through some tough times to even get to a start line. But the ones that I'm close to are the ones. It, it the last chapter in my book, the greatest call I ever made, and it is the greatest call. I get emotional thinking about this because my boy was three years old when I started this, and then he decides after playing uh, baseball through college and playing independent league baseball that dad, I want to do an Ironman. I go, Are you kidding me? You're like 205 pounds. You're big. you know. He goes back to high school weight of 175 pounds, and I got to call my son an Ironman. And, I, you know, trying to hold my stuff together while I did that was was difficult. But to have his big sister at the finish line putting the Mylar blanket around his shoulders, his mom putting his medal around his neck. You know, I, I just it was the greatest thing that ever happened on my announcing side. And then, you know, I called people in like Sarah Reinerson from San Diego, who attempted Ironman uh, as, as the first female amputee. It, it was unheard of. And she failed. She didn't, she didn't make the bike cut off. We were just so distraught because we were just behind her for years. And then the, she didn't give up. The next year, she had a motto called unfinished business. As a matter of fact, that night at the finish line, I saw her there with her mom. Now she's watching all the other people come in. She looked at me and she says, I'm doing this next year. Here's a girl that just failed. She has one leg and she's telling me she and she had a motto of unfinished business for 12 solid years. And the next year when I brought her in, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. And she represented so much in other people to to just because you fail at something, you're not a failure. And she became a success because of that. So that that was one of the greatest calls I ever made of bringing Sarah to the finish line. And there's so many numerous others bringing Heinz Ward in. I mean, here he is, my idol, Super Bowl MVP, caught his pass from uh, in that Super Bowl to win the game, and he decides to do an Ironman. We all kind of laughed in the endurance business. It's big, and he set his mind to it. And when I brought him in, and he looked up at me, and I pointed at him. He even wrote in my book, it was one the greatest moment of his athletic career. Think about that. Because it was, it was all him. It wasn't... It, it, the team was him and and people in his life said, you can't do this. And he did. So when I called him an Ironman, I, I knew what it meant to him. And so those are the great calls, Browner. Those are the ones that I remember, the ones that people didn't think were going to happen. When yeah. you you have put yourself in a position to be mentioned 
when people think about football and announcing, they think of Howard Co- they think of Howard Cosell and John Madden. And, and when people think of baseball, they they think of some of the legendary announcers, Jack Buck, mm-hmm. Vin Scully. Yeah, you're you're that for this. Hmm. How does how does that feel to you? I know you. I know when you've done something, people don't necessarily see the gravity of what they've done because they've walked the road. They're wearing the shoes. But from an outsider looking in, you're you're that you're him to to this industry. How does that mm-hmm. feel? It's humbling. It's it's gratifying that uh, I'm I'm a avid preparer for events and kind of know everybody and and I'd always go there as prepared as I can, which would do away with my nerves. Going all right, I'm ready. Uh, you know, people have said, Mike, how come you didn't get into because I love baseball and, you know, be able to uh, call nine inning games. And I, I, I feel confident I could have probably done that through my career and things like that. But I don't, you know, knowing Dick Enberg so well and having him introduce me one time at a Hall of Champions event, I'm thinking I'm, I don't deserve to be in this in this because those four words, when I first said them in 1991, it was for a friend here in San Diego. He, he was not confident he was going to do the race. And all I said to him on the street before the race, I go, don't worry, you'll be an Ironman. So when he came in, I was almost like, like kidding him, putting it in his face. See, I told you so. You are an Ironman. But the crowd exploded. And they didn't really know who he was. So I kept saying it. And I go, that's it. They're an Ironman. That's what they are. That's that's what I'll call them. Sure, I can say congratulations, job well done, and you know you hit a home run, you finished the race, whatever it may be. But those four words uh, told them that they're everything they thought they could be. And so when I'm compared to other people that I love and listen to and 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 adore, uh, I, it's humbling, you guys. I I never thought of myself that I didn't get into this game because of that because this game was my passion. And, you know, I've done triathlon and I've, I've run events and I've sat at nine inning games and I've been at a Chargers season ticket hole back in the day forever. So I was there, but, but when it came to what I did, those four words weren't Mike Riley's. They were theirs. They were each and every finisher that, that jumped over a lot of friggin' hurdles to get there. And, uh, and I realized that. And so I gave them those four words. And people tell me, they'll come up to me 10, 20 years later. That was the greatest moment of my life because you changed my life with those four words. So, dude, I, I you know. Dude, I mean, you, you, I am like, I have goosebumps. Flashbacks. I mean, just, 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 just total goosebumps thinking about this right now, Mike. Um, hey, Mike, listen, um, gosh, I could sit here and talk to you all day long, but I want to just su- suggest to everybody, um, the book is still out there. Mike Riley, finding my voice tales mm. from, from the Ironman, the world's uh, greatest endurance race. I, I, you're like crushing me right now. Cause I could keep going for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm so emotional thinking about all the stuff you're talking about. Um, Mike, congratulations on an amazing career. Um, last thing before you go, we got about 30 seconds. Uh, Alex is putting your book up on the screen. Do they know who's replacing you? No, there's just a, I have mentored a lot of people, but there's not a single I, a person, you know, I made a huge commitment of a lot of time and a lot of effort. And it's tough for one person to do those 13, 14 events a year like that, full Ironman. So I don't know, Scotty, you know, that's why my continuation of me talking to everybody is on my podcast, find your finish line. It's as simple as that. So I, I, I get goosebumps too talking about this and I know, how you feel and what you went through to get to that finish line. And that's why to be able to, you know, be the greatest announcer in all of baseball or football, I I, I can't aspire to that. I never did because I knew what I did help heal so many people and, 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 and make them the champions that they are so they can go out and make this world a better place to live in. It, It sounds grandiose, but it's pretty darn simple. Dude, it's true. I'm telling you, I use the lessons learned every single day. Uh, Mike Riley, appreciate you, love you, and uh, wish you, you and too. your family a very, very happy and holiday, uh, happy and healthy holiday season. Mike Riley, everybody, retiring as the voice of the Iron Man, and I really, really wanted to get this interview on the air 
before we got off the air, uh, today being our final show. Lots more to get to. We're in the Seven Mile Casino. Mike, stand by for one sec. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, everybody, and we got a lot more to get to. Hey, great friends. Final segment today of Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studio, sevenmilecasino.com. And I'm going to try and save some time here at the end of the segment to send out some love and some shout outs to a lot of people, total stream of consciousness, not something that's prepared in any way. So um, I want to save some time for the very end, but I got to just tell you, for those of you that are listening, Grande, Brown Man, I know you guys aren't into Iron Man. I know you're not into endurance sports, but as Browner pointed out to Mike Riley, who was just with us, I mean, he is to that sport what Vin Scully was to baseball. Yeah, I, I think it's, I don't know what Browner's, I have quite a few random Sundays sitting down and watching Iron Man on NBC under my belt. Uh, I, I just think that whole thing. And I remember talking to you about it. I've, you've talked, you know, Bob Brown had never seen that video. I seen a video a bunch like that. The, for whatever reason, the, the, the one in, is Kona, right? Mm -hmm. That one just seems like stupid. Like well, that one's the world because, championship, right? Like just the weather, the heat, you're running on lava. Like it's just, uh, <laughs> you know, like that one seems crazy. I, 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 I don't even know if it still does. It does it air on NBC still? Uh, on believe so, believe so. Yeah. They package it. You know what happens they is, is it, the yeah. race, the race happens, and then they package it, and then they air it. You know, weeks later. And I was sitting there watching it. This is after I had done it, and um, all of a sudden, you know, they they talk about the pros and how great they are, and they talk about you know, then they start to get into age group people, and then they start to talk about hey, it's starting to get late, and now you know, there's not that much time, and these people are out there suffering. And then they start to show, they're like, but then when they finally make it, and they showed me on the NBC show. Oh, did they? Because I had that kind of emotional reaction, mm -hmm. you know? What was your time? Like 13 hours. And it was the people that win or are competing. What, yeah, they're what doing they? it in like seven and change. That's crazy. Almost That's eight. so crazy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, Dude, I never, <clears throat> I, I don't follow endurance sports um, for reasons I won't share, but dude yeah didn't know you had it <laughs> i was the I funniest heard you, i heard you competed i heard you done this thing dude but the funniest line i Whoa. never would have challenged you to all those things if i would have seen that video <laughs> <laughs> yeah man here i am thinking you're just some fat yeah. old guy no, no, no i am no, no. no i am a fat old guy i back then i was a i was a younger ripped guy if you had a hinge account or a bumble you should like screenshot you at the Iron Man line. You know Ooh, what I'm saying, bro? Dude? Right. You'd be right. blowing yeah. up them right. DMs, boy. Right. Yeah, trying to catfish uh, some suckers out there. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like Mike said at the commercial break when nobody heard him off air. He was like, "Hey, listen, you know, you guys are doing a great job. Never listen to the naysayers. One foot for." I mean, he just he got a lot of motivational advice, and you know, he's been a lifelong San Diegan, a longtime listener, and so uh, really, really glad we did that today. But it is our final broadcast of the day. Uh, or of the year, I should I saw say. Saw your parents there. I never seen oh, that yeah. video, man. That was good. I'm glad I saw yeah, that. My parents Scott Kaplan Iron Man. You could watch it every time you miss him, dude. I, listen, one thing beyond <laughs> after my parents in that video, um, my buddy Dan Selstad, known to most people in San Diego as Doctor Pain, because he's the guy who does what's called ART treatment on all the traveling. This was the guy we've talked to, and remember, he was Kobe Bryant's ART. Oh, therapist, I remember him? Okay? Yeah. Dan put a picture of himself in the hospital the other day. He was having some tendon fixed on his foot or something. And I was going back and forth with him. After I hugged it out with my parents, as I was walking back to meet with my kids, Dan, who was right, he, he was working me out before the race that morning, was standing right there screaming at me because he was a big part of my, my entire experience. So, yeah, man, I'm telling you, anybody could do it. I know it seems Iron Man like a lot. seems like something, though, that you just can't train for on your own. Yeah, I had three buddies that I trained yeah. with. Like, this just needs, like, you need to know what you're training for. Yeah. Like, you, you need, like, a right. regimen. You need, like. Oh, oh, dude, you, we had a coach. Yeah. And you need, yeah. and you need yeah. people coach. pushing you. You need people you need, around you. Need you. Someone yeah. to, you need a little LeBron James situation. Dude, you know, they used and, to, and, like, I would know on Sundays, <laughs> hey, S Saturday's my long bike ride. Sunday's my long run. Mm -hmm. Saturday's bike ride could be 85 miles, 90 miles. And then Sunday's run could be 16 miles, 20 miles. But, like, you had to dedicate the time yeah. to do that, you know? Yeah. So. All right. Um, let me spend a couple of minutes and I'm going to get, I'm going to get back into this NFL stuff. As a matter of fact, speaking of the NFL stuff, I, I will say this be, real quick. Last night I was watching the Lakers get beat up by the Sacramento Kings. And, um, and when I think about Christmas day, which is coming up this Sunday, when I think about Christmas day and I think about when the Lakers will get beat again, Well, I'm not even thinking about the Lakers. I'm thinking about basketball versus football, because if you really, really look at this weekend, 
most of the NFL games will happen on Saturday rather than on Sunday. And the NFL will have saved its Sunday schedule to go toe to toe with the NBA's basketball schedule for Christmas. Let's take a quick look at this because I know Dr. Fry is going to stop by for a few minutes, but let's take a quick look at this. Christmas Eve, one, two, three, four, you got 11 games highlighted by, I mean, some, the Eagles and the Cowboys. Well, it's a uh, monster game. game. Not anymore. Well, well yeah, that's true. That's true. And the quarterback's out. But but the Eagles not having Jalen Hurts. I mean, this is this is a big situation right here. And mm-hmm. and maybe the implications aren't what they might have been. But the Raiders and the Steelers. Now, I don't think either of those teams are going to the playoffs. But the 50 year anniversary of the Immaculate Reception and the Franco Harris death this week, crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Browner, Browner the, Char- you- the Chargers, they're no, they don't play till Monday, but they can clinch a playoff spot this weekend if the Chargers win Monday with a Jets loss, with a Patriot with Tonight. a Patriots loss, and a Raiders loss. The Chargers are in. Yeah. Now the Patriots are going to lose to the Bengals. The Jets are. Mm-hmm. I'm going to. I'm going to. Going to lose to the Jags, the Jags tonight. tonight. And I'm yeah. probably thinking the Steelers. Against the Raiders. The Jaguars, because Ryan Tannehill's out, the Jaguars could very much be the AFC South champion. That Which could is crazy, happen. by the way. That yeah. could happen. Now, now just, just going back to that slide for a second. So we're looking at some of these Christmas Eve. Christmas Day. Packers at the Dolphins. Eh. Nah. Okay. Cr- Christmas God, Dolphin, day. please. Please. Yeah. Please. Later don't, that don't day. Don't let cr- them come back into this thing. But, but listen to this. Christmas Day. The, the NFL, the Terrible. NFL has decided we're going to put up our our games versus the NBA games. Christmas Day, Packers at the Dolphins. No thanks. Broncos at the Rams. No thanks. Buccaneers at the Cardinals. I tell you what, man. I, before the season started, that looked good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. And, right. And, and at the start of the season, I was like, I'm all NFL Christmas Day. Because now, if you go to the NBA games, you look at the NBA games on Christmas Day, and. I, I don't know about the rest of you guys. Like, I'm going to be in front of a TV literally all day in Christmas. 76ers at Knicks. Eh. Lakers at Dallas. So watch. Watch. Okay. Buccaneers at Celtics. Oh, Buccaneers. That's a watch. The, the Buccaneers. The Milwaukee Bucks <laughs> at the Celtics. <laughs> Bucks Celtics is a watch. That's a watch. Um, Memphis against Golden State. That's a no watch. No curry. It's not going to. That's going to be ugly. And then Phoenix at Denver. That's a and watch. by the way, for those of you listening on radio, Alex has a slide on the screen right now. 76ers, put it up for one second. 76ers, Knicks, two easy logos to figure out. Lakers, easy. The rest of these logos, I mean, Celtics and Golden State, some of them are kind of hard to know. And oh, I think, you. Alex, are you not Come impressed on, with my Denver and Memphis? Are you Come doing? on, Stop. dude. Oh, you're no, NBA, NBA, you NBA cap now, dude. Yep. I'm not, giving you, that. I'm not giving right. you that. I'm not giving you that. I'm not giving you that. I gotta, Those I gotta, so I gotta like insert a little Browner into this conversation and tell you that that is a horrendous slate of basketball that I will not mm-hmm. be watching. It's not great. I'm gonna rewatch. It's I'm not... gonna rewatch the World Cup final. Nice. That's an You would. You yeah. would. No, I never watch NBA Christmas game. Never. I love NBA Christmas games, man. They're awesome. Especially they, the they don't look so great. Terrible as they are. They don't look. The, the slate of games doesn't look that great. But neither do the NFL games. I'm watching neither. Right. Poop in, poop out. Yeah. All right. Here is Dr. Fry from I Thrive MD, who last week shocked the world when she <laughs> showed up on the air down 30 pounds. And here she is today. Doc, you know that uh, you're down 30, maybe even more by now. But, you know, Alex is down 23 pounds. Did you know that? I did not know that. And also, I do have to say, oh. I was impressed by your icon or your emblem. Mm. I was like... The basketball, I, I did. Yeah. I was like, "How does he know what this means?" It's just a shooting star of a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't, I don't know how many of the four of you, the three of us, the three of you are on TikTok, but that is a that is a trend on TikTok where What's boyfriends that? film their girlfriends, and they have, there's like this random generator. Their logo pops up for a sports team, and they're like, "Who is this?" So oh they, you would have been like shooting basketball you know like you know you know, what, stars. Yeah. you know what's worse you know what's worse my daughter on tiktok goes like this all right dad i'm going to show you pictures of my friends tell me their names mm. don't know oh. don't know oh. don't know don't you're like I know oh, who paid, she is but i don't paid, know her name paid for her dinner once before paid for her yeah. dinner right twice don't before. know her name i know her <laughs> she's been here don't know her name yeah that's fine my guy called my dad called every guy that i 
brought home in like high school. He called him Guy. I'm like, you know his name, right? He's like, yup. Mm-hmm. Hey, Guy. <laughs> He's yeah. Guy. Guy. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. Now we could call him my guy. What's up, yeah. my guy? <laughs> yeah. What's up, my guy? Hey, Dr. Fry. Um, so, again, we missed you this past Saturday on the yacht trip with Next Level Sailing in the Yacht America. Oh. We did have Dr. Max A walking around the boat. <laughs> and um, and it was great to see him. But I, I told Dr. Max A, I said, I can't believe Dr. Fry lost 30 pounds. I didn't think she needed to lose any weight. I'm like, man, yeah. she, 30 pounds, Doc. That's a lot. I know. I, I, I'm, Yeah, it happened. Um, this stuff really <laughs> works. And um, I think a lot of it, ha- like I lost a lot um, because I also kept up with exercising. Um, and I think that's really important for patients to know. Um, you will lose weight uh, without really altering your diet. Um, and you don't need to exercise. But I think it's just you can double the effects and also practice good behavioral modification by adding exercise and proper diet, because that's something that you're going to carry with you afterwards so that you don't lose, you don't gain back all the weight that you lost. Yeah. And I was impressed last week. I was telling Dr. Max A also that the fact that you've lost 30 pounds is great, but the fact that you said, look, I'm going to be prescribing this to people. I should probably take it and know what it does. Cause listen, um, not every doctor who prescribes cholesterol medication is taking cholesterol medication. You right. know what I'm saying? Like the fact that you said, I'm willing to try this out myself and see what it does to me so that I can tell you what it's going to do for you. I, I actually thought that was quite impressive. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I like to be able to, um, it's hard for me to tell people how to live their life or what to do or take this if I don't really know the effects and if I don't know what they're going to be feeling. Um, so I really can be with my patients every step of the way. Um, and when they start describing things, I know what they're talking about. It's actually been really, really helpful. Um, and yeah, that's the good thing about being in preventative medicine is most of the things I, we can do ourselves. I just can't inject. I don't inject myself with testosterone, but <laughs> if I could, I would guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Fry is at I thrive MD 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. You don't have to wait until January 1st to say, I'm going to lose weight. You could be losing weight literally right now during the holiday season, eating and drinking and perhaps mm-hmm. not exercising. But it's FDA approved. It's fully guaranteed. And for great friends like you, $200 in savings over the first two months. So it's $200 off the first month, $200 off the second month. Really big savings. And Alex, yeah. I mean, what, what would you say to everybody? What do I, what else do you need to say? I mean, you look yeah. at her, you look, you tell, I'm not lying about how much I've lost 23 as of this morning. Uh, you feel the same. I, you don't feel the same. You feel better. You, f- yeah. you feel better in your clothes if you're a bigger dude like me. Now you're fitting into things that you maybe never been able to fit fit in before. Uh, dude, and she's right. Yeah, your diet changes, but you, because you you need it to change. I don't know if that makes like you're eating better because like whatever it's doing to you, it's making you eat better. So hmm. ASAP, yeah. doctor. I keep saying I'm coming ASAP. You should. Yeah. I I'm mean, coming. I even uh, like experimented. I did. Um, well, I got my own blood work and all my cardio metabolic markers were down. Uh, my cholesterol was down. My uh, TSH was down. That's thyroid. Um, my blood pressure uh, kind of skyrocketed when I was in med school and is down now. <laughs> um, so really, it's not it, aside from just weight loss. It's really good for um, cardio metabolic markers, uh, re- reduction of any um, cardio uh, risk. And, um, it's just good overall for health. Wow. So um, it just the weight loss isn't enough to sell you. Yeah. Um, I really am impressed with all of the markers that it's changed. Also, one thing that's like the biggest thing for me is what tastes good now. Yeah. Like that lo- like legit dude, like my biggest weakness, my biggest, biggest weakness for any sort of diet was Doritos. Always has been. I think oh, I thought always will be. I was like, I will be if I need to be on a diet with Doritos, you know, and now I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just not the same. It's really not yeah. the same. They don't taste as good. <laughs> they, there's been a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos in my in my in my pantry for about three weeks now. That was yeah. like me and salt and vinegar chips. Yeah. I never thought I'd see that day. 
Yeah. Which ones do you like? I like those kettle chips, the salt and vinegar kettle oh, ones because they're really. Oh, well, those are I'm good. a Lay's salt and vinegar girl. I mean, oh. I'll have any type of salt and vinegar chip, but I got to go the OG. Got it. Mm -hmm. Well, doctor, um, it's been a great year for us and I thrive together. Um, and I really appreciate you and uh, all your colleagues there. And I look forward mm -hmm. to another year of great partnership. And I think that the I Thrive Lean product of all the things that we've done from testosterone to NAD plus to IVs. I mean, of all the things that we've done together, this weight loss product, this is it. This is the big one for us. Yeah, it's, it's pretty huge. It's a game changer for sure. Big time. Dr. Fry, happy holidays and a happy new year in advance. And we'll talk to you next year. You too, guys. Good to see you. All right. You too. You too. Dr. Fry so, stopping yeah. by from Bye. I Thrive MD. Um, all right. Hey guys, look, you know what? I'm going to, uh, I just would like to spend the last five minutes here of, of today's show and the last broadcast of the year. I just want to tell you guys both seriously, like um, when, when you're in what we do and you do it the way we do it, you guys know, but maybe you don't know exactly from where I'm sitting. Like there's so many highs and lows, you know, as the year goes on, like any business, some months are better than others. Some months you've made money, some months you've lost money, you know, it, it, but the thing about what we do now is, is that it's only the three of us. It literally is only the three of us. We don't have a sales team. We don't have a promotions team. We don't have an office space. We don't have a studio. It's the three of us at our homes putting on the radio show, the podcast, the TV show, uh, all the audio, we, the website, the, the emails that people receive, all the social media content that we push. I mean, everything that you're on the receiving end of is done by three people. You know, um, and this year I'm, I'm committed to growth and growing means adding bodies, eyeballs, brains, hands, uh, time. So I'm so committed to you guys that we will grow this next year, you know, and, um, and I say committed to you guys. And I mean, everybody who's listening, everybody who's watching, everybody who's asked if they could help some way, um, committed to growth in 2023, but to you two guys, I want to say your bank accounts will, will show you this. Bonus coming and well, well deserved. I've never given a Christmas bonus. I've never been in a position. <laughs> How do you feel? How do you feel? Getting I feel, out of Christmas I feel good, coming? but I'll tell you where I'm going to feel better. A year from now, my goal is for you two guys to be making, you know, 20, 30, 40% more than you're currently making. And we're going into a year of uncertainty and recession and, and, you know, uh, you know, all the, the economic indicators that you hear that say we're about to start, you know, experiencing harder times. My goal is to get more creative, more aggressive, uh, put more time into it. I'm, being, I'm taking from you Twitter and I'm putting into you sales of the show. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I really mm -hmm. want to commit to to growing because I think shows is better than it's ever been. How you feel, boss, opinion. man? How you feeling? You want to rate 2022? You want to give it a grade, a letter grade? Oh, I give I, I Ooh, give 2022 question. a very, very solid B. Mm -hmm. Very solid B. Ooh. I'm talking like an 85%. Mm. Just a really good wow. the reason. Oh, the reason, stunning. I, Listen, that would have been an A in yeah, my I house. I could give it a 91 and give it an A-, minus. but why? I mean, there's so much more room for improvement. Mm. How about you guys? What do you rate? What do you grade, letter grade 2022 on the show? Uh, I mean, for me, I thought, I thought it was a huge success. I wouldn't necessarily, uh, view down the letter grade. Cause I would just give it an A cause it's my arrogance, but a is for arrogance, outside right? of, uh, yeah, A for arrogance. I, I just thought that, this, I thought that everything's going great, man. Everybody gets along. I think some of the times what people don't see is what happens behind this. Like we all like each other. Like this isn't a, this isn't a chore. This isn't a lift. And I think this is the best part of our day. For I mean, I have to speak for myself. This is the best part of my day, man. So if, when we get to do this, this is this is fantastic, man. And so I think that is, in itself is enough. I'll be me. real quick about this one. Uh, special shout out to both of you guys. It is a pleasure to talk to you for three hours a day, each of you. Honestly, I know we don't really have bosses here, but it it, it does feel that way, even though someone writes the check here. But but <laughs> real quick, real real quick. I cannot let it go without saying a special shout out to Toby McDonald, who me and him talk every single day, posting clips on YouTube every single day. He is a shout big out. part of why the YouTube has been growing. Shout out to him. And always a special shout out to my consigliere, Joe Rigby, who is 
the best listener I know. Yeah. Shout out to all of our sponsors. I mean, obviously I could list them all seven mile casino and Tory holistics and I thrive and Penske, San Diego and mountain trust. And, you know, I mean, all, all the sponsors ride one up. I'll just say this. If you support the show, you got to support the sponsors. If you're going to buy an e-bike, you buy it from ride one up. If you're going to buy a car, you buy it from Penske. Um, you know, if you're going to buy a house, you use Gary Cooper. If you want weight loss, you, you go to I thrive and the list goes on and on. Uh, thanks to all of our sponsors. Thanks to Bill Hagen, his wife, Christina Hagen, and everybody who put 1090 back on the air. Thanks to everybody from Cox, your view, who puts this show on television. Um, and most of all, I, I really thank, you know, again, I'm only doing this, not like we're winning an Academy award, but we're going off the air for about the next, you know, five, six, seven days. I, I thank all the listeners. I mean, everybody who was yes. at the boat trip last weekend, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of others who weren't. So thanks to everybody. Shout out to all the chat. Right. Eleven, Chatlins, 11 days friends. off, boys. I know, big, big break. Oof. Big old break coming up. So come back ready to go on January 3rd. This will be new behind me. This will be new behind me next time y'all see All right, me. cool. Uh, we'll see everybody on January 3rd. Much love. Happy holidays. Peace out, 1090 listeners. And for everybody else, we'll have an even longer finish on the podcast side. We love you, and we'll see you in 23. All right. Well, that's going to do it. That's it. We're done. We're actually really, really done. We're going to really take a vacation. Browner, how do you feel about taking a vacation? We know how Alex feels. Uh, you know, it'll, sports hopefully will be here when we get back. I doubt it. I think the world's probably going to go to shit while we're gone, but I don't know. I'll, every time we leave, I find myself doing more social media, so maybe that's why I'll find my solace in social media, and I've also been doing stand-up whenever, a little more when we tend to uh, go away so I'll, I'll fill the time with my lonely heart and other parts of my life i am going to try and do what you guys suggested yesterday i'm going to try and document the oh you have to the, please the do. trip please do last night all of last it. night i came home um and i talked to i said to my four kids i go everybody be home everybody be ready i need to talk to everybody and um i talked to all my kids last night about like hey some shit got to, got to change, man. Like we, we gotta, I, we can't go on a family trip like this. If everybody's not going to get along and, and be there for the fun. And if it's going to be, you know, if there's going to be stress and it's going to be fighting, fuck it. Let's not go. Like, so I'm, I'm really excited about this break. I mean, I, you guys have challenged me. I'm, I'm battling with Rachel right now, this Disneyland trip. I told you guys I will get out of Disneyland for under four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Won't happen. She's trying to get me to buy fast passes, and I'm refusing to buy fast <laughs> passes. Here's my excuse: I'm not buying them till we get there and we see if we really need them. You're gonna need them. She goes like this: You, you always need goes, them well, on Christmas Eve. You did make reservations, right? I said yes. She goes, you do realize that the park is sold out. There are no more tickets available for Christmas Eve. I said yes. She goes, how do you not think we're gonna need them? And I keep trying to make excuses for why I'm not buying fast passes. Does she know because about your $400 I gotta, limit? Well, no, she doesn't know about my $400 mm. limit. She, she cannot know. know. She cannot know. know. So, <laughs> so I'm going to try and get out of Disney for under 400 Oh, my God. Okay? You're insane. And no, it's so funny because if I didn't have free passes because of my employment with Disney, I would never be going. Christmas Eve would never be a consideration. If you told me, hey, look, want to take your family to, to Disney for Christmas Eve? Yeah, it'd be wonderful. You're going to have to buy eight tickets. Okay. No. Well, already I'm out. Okay. Then you're going to have to buy food and the, and parking. No, I'm out. I'm out on all of Dude, it. Dude, I forgot about the reservation thing. That is a great indicator of exactly why you will need fast passes. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Dude you're going to be miserable. Let me tell you this. You're, I wouldn't count that towards your 400 because you're going to be miserable waiting in line. If you want to avoid, I don't know, but it doesn't matter, dude. It'll because be worth I'm telling it. you if you're in line for three hours for the Dumbo ride, you're going to freaking want to murder yourself. You're going to hurt somebody. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to try my best to do to do. Let a... me help you buy them. Dude, I'm telling you, fuck all of that. The thing that's more important to me <laughs> about your 10 days off. Fuck that Disneyland trip. Damn. You have to Damn. find a way. Damn. No, it, it gets better. You have to find a way to record these two families together in mammoth because that's how we make the reality show yeah you need a sample yeah. you trailer. have to you you have to give us a Dude, you know what you need edible edited 
Well, I will. It's if you need, I will edit it. You know what you, you need? Give though? me the video, dude. You know what you need? This is. I'm telling you, this is gonna be. This could be so good. You know those Uber cameras that are pointed inside the vehicle? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two of those. I know. Fuck. Yes. I know. Don't even tell the kid. Just put them there. Just put them in. There. Put them in. The, put it behind the mirror. They don't pay attention. I know. I know. Or browner. <laughs> browner. Better yet, you ready? Go with the browner. Let me get your glasses. Go with the browner. <laughs> let me get them. Let me get them Ray Bans. I'll give them to Dude, you. Let me get, yeah. Let me hold them. I'll let you hold them. Down. Let me hold them, Jones. You hold them, Jones. All right. Listen. Just make sure. I got to figure out how to turn the light on. <laughs> <I know. laughs> All right. Hey guys. Hey guys, like listen, uh, we got to go. We got to yeah. get out of here. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I hope you have a very, very happy holidays with your family to everybody who's watching and listening, especially those of you who are still here right now. Love you. Appreciate you. And uh, just hope that everybody has a really, really happy and healthy holiday season. And then let's all reconvene here on January 3rd. Okay. Until then. Yes, sir. Peace out.